Thank you, Jacob and Karen. That was a beautiful start to our service this morning. Thank you for being here today. Let's see, I'm losing track. How many more days till Christmas? Anybody? Five? Okay, five days. Yep, I guess you're right. What are you looking forward to at Christmas time? Unwrapping presents. There's one truthful person here in the front. It's an exciting time. We get to unwrap presents. We get to share the love that we have for one another. We're reminded today, too, of the anticipation we ought to have not only for celebrating Christ's initial coming to earth, to come to, to live, to, to die, to be our Lord and our Savior, but we anticipate when He will return. And there should be an excitedness, the same excitedness we have for Christmas, and even more for the return of Christ. And we're celebrating that today as well. And I appreciate, again, all of you being here to help us retell that epic story of Christ coming to earth. God incarnate, God with us. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for these kids. We thank you for these teachers who have extended their time and given their efforts to, to retell this story, that we might be reminded of your love and your grace for us. God, as we gather today, we pray that your spirit would touch our hearts, that we would be renewed, that we would shine brightly as the people of God. Thank you for this time. And each one, in your name, Jesus, amen. Now, one thing I wanted to remind you of is um, after the worship service, I'm going to get the camera and we're going to take it downstairs so that you can send your greetings to those who are unable to be with us. That All I expect you to say is Merry Christmas um, and so that those who aren't able to be with us can see your smiling faces and accept and receive your warm welcome. With that, I invite you now to stand and join as we sing together. may be seated. One day in a small town of Nazareth, a messenger of God visited a young woman in her home. Her name was Mary. The angel Gabriel said to her, good morning, Mary. You are beautiful with God's radiance, beautiful inside and out. God is with you. Mary was quite shaken by what the angel and what he said. She wondered what was behind such a greeting. Mary, you have nothing to fear. You have been chosen to give birth to a son, and when he is born, you will name him Jesus. Now, thoroughly confused, Mary asked, but how? I am only just engaged and have not yet been with a man. The angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child you will bring into the world will be called Holy, the Son of God. Seeing doubt and the impossibility of the situa situation written on her face, Gabriel, Gabriel reassured Mary. He told her about the miracle work that God was doing in her old elder cousin, Elizabeth. Mary, listen to this. 
In their old age, God has given Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah a much longed for, yet seemingly impossible gift. Even though, they are both, even though both of them are well beyond childbearing years, Elizabeth is now six months pregnant. You see, Mary, nothing is impossible with God. So, with simple faith and obedience, Mary replied, Yes, I see it now, and I believe, as the Lord's maid, I am ready to serve. Let it be to me, just as, just as you have said. The spark becomes a light. Let the light of your face shine upon me, O Lord. Joseph. He didn't know what to think when he discovered that Mary was pregnant. You see, even though that they were engaged to be married, they had not yet come together as husband and wife. How could this be? Now he had a choice to make. Should he follow the law, which meant certain humiliation and possible harm under these circumstances, or should he show kindness and mercy to his beloved Mary, quietly divorcing her as so as not to cause her public disgrace? All day long, he wrestled with these thoughts. Exhausted in mind and spirit, Joseph fell, fell into a troubled speak, sleep. In a dream, God's angel spoke. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to take Mary home as your wife. She has done nothing wrong. What is conceived in her is the, from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus, which means God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, his mind was clear. In obedience, he did exactly what God, God's angel said he should do. The light becomes brighter. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Many days passed, news of census came, the timing could not have been more inconvenient. Mary, near the end of her pregnancy, a, a baby ready to came, come at any time. Joseph distressed that he had to make the long trip back to his hometown to be, con to be counted, but in faith and obedience they set out for Bethlehem.
He could not remember a time when the city was this crowded, because Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census was to be taken of the entire Roman world. Bethlehem was busting at it at the seams with travelers making the trip back from their hometown to be counted. So when the young couple came to the place looking for a room, the innkeeper had none to give. But seeing the condition of the woman, he just had to help. Leading them out back, he shoveled a few animals out of to the side yard, apologized for the conditions and smell, and let them use his stable. It wasn't much, but he gave it freely. The light grows. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. On that star-filled night, Mary gave birth to a son, her firstborn. Swaddling him in a blanket, she placed the sleeping baby in the only place there was, the animal's feed trough, a wooden manger filled with hay. The light of true life is born. He is the light of the world. The, peop the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. It was like a dream. Out on the hillsides, shepherds were hunkered down with their sheep, keeping a watchful eye on their bread and butter. All of a sudden, a dazzling light shone all around them. They shielded their eyes and fell to the ground in terror. 
Then they heard a voice. There is no need to be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone. A savior has been born in the city of David. He is the Messiah and master. Now, shepherds, go. This is what you are to search for, a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. When you find him, you will know it to be true. Then, thousands upon thousands of angels appeared and filled the night sky, all singing God's praises. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men, on whom his favor rests. no time. Gathering their sheep, they hurried off to Bethlehem to see for themselves what God had revealed. Coming to a stable, they found a young couple, and just as the angel had said, there was a baby lying in a manger. It was all true. This was the Messiah. It was almost too much to take in. They left with great joy, telling everyone about the angel's announcement and what their own eyes and ears had witnessed on that most amazing night. Good news, the Savior is born. The light goes into all the world. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn.
In John 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What does it mean to be the light? To be God's light as Christ indwells his people. I think of several things that it means that we are purified, that we are made right, we are made justified in God. The light is also warmth. It brings comfort to God's people. And thirdly, the illumination allows us to light the way for others to see Christ, to know Christ, to be known by Christ. And with that, we sing together this song, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. They that follow with him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. They that follow with him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. They that follow with him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven.
Christmas, Heidi. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, kids. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Connie. Steve. Good job, little ones. <laughs> Merry Christmas, kids. Christmas kids. Lisa. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Carol. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Christine. Because it's up there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's recording now. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Were you waving at me? Hey, one more time because I'm not sure if I got it. We can only smile once. No. There it is. There it is. Merry Christmas. Lisa. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, ready? Okay. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Sorry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.